The only triangle congruent theorem that we have not talked about is hypotenuse leg theorem. Okay, and what that theorem says is that if you have a right triangle, two right triangles, and they have a leg that's congruent and a hypotenuse, then we know that those two triangles are congruent. And that was the only one that I didn't discuss the other day. So now we're going to look at a couple of proofs. So if you turn to page, let's see, here we are, uh, 234. Now this proof is done, but I want to talk through it. Now one of the things I do is I always write in my picture what the words tell me. So for instance, this first given statement is angle MQP. Okay, this angle right here is congruent to NPQ. And then I write it down here and I say given. The next one says that angle MPQ, so that would be this one, is congruent to angle NQP. And we write it in our chart as given. Next, it is telling you that segment QP is congruent to segment QP, and that's because of the reflexive property. And now I know that my triangles are congruent because of angle, side, angle, okay? Now, if I wanted to say anything else past this, um, for instance, if I had a prove down here, instead of this being the two triangles, instead I said prove that MQ is congruent to NP. That would be my next step. MQ is congruent to NP because of corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, once I, once I get to this point where I prove that the two triangles are congruent, remember I told you the other day, that means everybody in those two, uh, well, each pair of angles and each pair of sides has to be congruent, um, even if they weren't used in our proof. To, Okay, um, let's see, turn each, I think, yes. Okay, so first it tells us angle A is congruent to angle C. And that's given. Then it tells us that E is the midpoint of AC. That's given. Okay, and when it tells us that, that we know that AE is congruent to EC because of the definition of midpoint. All right, so now next it says angle AEB, that was this angle right here, is congruent to CED, that angle. And those two angles are congruent because they're vertical angles. And now I know that those triangles are congruent because of angle, side, angle. All right, now the next one looks a little bit difficult and, and I want to I want to actually outline these so triangle JL or JML we want to prove is congruent to KLM but this is going to be much easier to see if you separate these guys out and I know my drawings don't look 
near like they should, but that's okay. All right, so once I have those drawn out, this says that angle JLM, which is this angle, is congruent to KML, which is that. And I would write that down here as given. Then it says that JML is congruent to KLM which is that angle there. And I would write it down here as given. Next we need, look, I have two angles. I need the side. So I could say LM is congruent to LM because of reflexive property. And now I know that those two triangles are congruent. I'm going to shortcut a little bit, not write out all the letters, because of angle, side, angle. Um, I hope that was enough. It worked well in class. I didn't have the sound on. So I will answer any questions when I see you next week. Make sure you do that review for the test and study hard for the test. Have a great long weekend. Bye. Uh, I videoed it, um, and then, lo and behold,